Hey, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to build a profile information gathering form that complements the user registration form. I wanted to test out Rails' hotwire features and see if I can migrate a feature like the user registration with the Vice to use hotwire. And I thought a profile information gathering feature might be a nice one to build. We're also going to look at how to add a little bit of animation to make the UI look better. Sometimes it's worth spending some time to make your app look pretty. So we've got this new Rails project where the only thing I have installed is Tailwind CSS. And I'm going to add the Vise, which is the most popular way of adding user registration and authentication to a Rails app. If you want to see how I create a new Rails project, I'm going to link to another video in the description. Also, if you're interested in learning Rails, I'm making a new course which will cover everything you need to know about it, including the new features introduced in Rails 7. So let's take a look at some code. We're going to start off by adding the device gem to the project and we're going to generate the migration and view files for device. After adding the gem to the gem file, you need to run bundle to install it. Then we can install the necessary files by running rails g device install and it will print some instructions on how to set it up. Namely, we'll have to add some code to the environment's development file. This code defines the host and the port for all the links inside the emails that get generated in the development environment. Next, we need to make sure we have a root route defined, which we do. And we're not going to use the flash helpers, but we are going to generate the views that device uses so we can tweak them. Next, I need to also tell device which model I'm going to use as the resource. So I'm going to run Rails G device user which will generate a migration that creates the users table, it will configure the user model to use device, and it will also add some device-specific routes. We can run the migrations now to create the users table and all the columns that device needs. And then we can add some more columns for the user's profile information. I'm going to add a text column for the user's bio, an integer column for the user's age, a date of birth column, and for his address, I'm going to add country, city, zip, and address. And lastly, I'm going to add a column for the user's phone number. Now we can run Rails DB Migrate to update the database schema, and if we look at it, we should see all the new columns in there. But I realized that I forgot to add a name column for the user, so I'm going to add a migration for the name column and run the migrations. Let's start the server now and see what we got. Because I've copied over the project from a previous one, I've got some text and a button here, which I'm going to replace with a heading that says dashboard. And I want a welcome message to be displayed when the user signs in. So I'm going to say, if user signed in, which is a helper provided by device, which returns true or false, depending on if the user is logged in or not. And if the user is logged in, I want to say welcome and then the user's name or the email address if it doesn't have a name. And I'm going to put the user's profile form underneath this welcome message. And if the user is not logged in, I'm going to display a button which should load the sign up form. But I don't want to leave this page, so I want to wrap it in a turbo frame tag. And I need to create that profile partial so that I don't get any complaints. So if we look at the page now, we're going to see the sign up button because we're not logged in. But if we click it, nothing happens. Or so it seems. Actually, if we look inside the logs, we're going to see that the request has completed OK, signified by this 200 OK message. So what's going on? Well, if we take a look at the JavaScript console, we're going to see an error message. It's saying that it couldn't find the expected frame tag identifier in the response. So when we clicked the link, we were inside a turbo frame tag, but the response of that request didn't have any updates for that frame tag. Or at least that's what Hotwire thinks, because it cannot associate the response with any of the existing frame tags, because there is no frame tag with the new user ID in the response. So to fix this, we can go change the device template and add the frame tag. I'm going to wrap the entire form in a frame tag with the new user ID. And now, if we click the sign up button, we should see the form. And we do. It's just that it doesn't look very good. So to fix that, I'm going to add the Tailwind Typography plugin and then add some classes to make this look better. I'm going to copy and paste some HTML code to add a container and a nav bar. I'm also going to add the Prose class, which comes from the Tailwind Typography plugin, 
to the heading and the welcome message. And if we reload the page now, we can see that the content is centered on the page. We see a nice logo at the top and the typography working. But unfortunately, clicking the sign up link still displays an ugly looking form. So let's fix that. I'm going to replace the HTML for the sign up form with one that uses Tailwind classes, which will add a nicer styling to the form. So if we refresh the page now and click the sign up button, we can see the form looks a lot better now. Okay, so let's try to create an account. Again, the same problem with an empty page. If we take a look at the logs, we'll see that the device is looking for a user URL, which we don't have. So let's add a route for users and try to create an account again. Because I've used the same email, I get a validation error, which doesn't look very pretty. So let's first fix that and then remove the record from the database so we can create another account. The registration form is using this error messages partial to display the errors and it doesn't have any styling. So I'm going to copy and paste some HTML I've got prepared for this. And now the errors should look a tiny bit better and they do. So let's clear the user's table and try to create a record again. Okay, now we get a different error. It's because we don't have a controller for the routes we've defined. So let's add one. And by the way, this redoing the process over and over again is cool for making videos because you can see everything in the browser. But in practice, I would use tests to guide me through this process of changing code and then retrying it. If you want to learn more about how that's done, check out my book, Bulletproof Ruby on Rails Applications, which I've linked in the description. Basically, you want to drive your code with tests instead of you clicking the links and filling forms and removing data like I'm doing here. It's a slow process and you get tired of it after doing this for a while. But anyway, let's go to trying this out. If we go ahead and submit the form now, we don't get any errors in the logs and we also don't get anything in the browser. And that is because we don't have anything to display in the profile partial. If you remember, we left it empty. But if I refresh the page, I get my welcome message. That's because the welcome message is not part of the new user frame. So when I refresh the page, everything gets re-rendered, not just the frame. So let's first put something in the profile partial so we can see it working. And then, because we do want the entire page to refresh, we'll add a data attribute to the form. This turbo frame top attribute will break out the frame so that we get the new page back. Nice. It works. Now let's fill in that profile partial with something useful. We want to display one field at a time for each of the empty profile columns. So first, we'll check if the profile is complete, because if it is, there is no point in trying to display the form. But if it's not, we will display a one field form which asks the user to complete his profile and it will render a partial for the next field that is missing. And it will also display a progress bar so the user can have a visual cue of how much this process would take to complete. Then we'll have a submit button and we're also going to display a random image just to make things look pretty. The image is not going to be part of the actual form. So for displaying the progress bar, we need to return the percentage completed. And we're going to create a method called profile complete on the user that will return that number. And to determine the next field we need to render, we'll create another method called missing profile section on the user. And this method will return a string with the name of the column, which we'll have a partial for. So let's create the logic for all of these methods in the user model. The first method from top to bottom is the profile complete predicate method, which returns true or false. It will only return true if the completed percentage is 100. So we'll need to make another method called profile complete, which should return a number and will compare it to the number 100. And now let's define that method. We'll use another method called fields complete so we know how many of the fields have been filled in and if that number is zero then we'll return 10 so we at least see some progress in the progress bar and if it's not zero then we'll return the actual percentage okay so now let's create those methods first the fields complete method should count the number of fields that are not empty or nil and we can use the present method for that and we'll also convert that number to a float because we're going to use it to calculate the completed percentage. Okay, so the second method is going to be the percent complete method. And this one will calculate the percentage by dividing the number of completed fields to the number of fields total. And it will multiply the result with 100. Okay, and the fields total is going to be a method that just returns the total number of fields as a float. Lastly, the method that returns the name of the column that needs to be filled in is going to return the first empty field it can find. 
And if we try it in the browser, we're going to get an error saying we don't have a partial for the name field. So we'll have to create partials for each one of those profile fields. And I'm going to paste the code in so you don't have to see me type it. For the name partial, we have a text field with the appropriate classes so it looks good. And now we can reload the page and we'll see that it's working. But before we fill in the name, let's make sure we have a partial for all those profile fields. So I'm going to create one for the bio field, another one for the address, one for the age, city, country, date of birth, phone, and zip. Okay, hopefully I got them all. And now let's try it. Ah, I forgot to create an update method in the user's controller. So let's do that now. The update method is going to call update on the current user with the params. And we're going to create the user params method which permits the profile to be updated. So let's try it again. Now when I hit save, I don't see anything happening in the browser. And that's expected because if you look at the update action, you'll see it doesn't do anything. It doesn't redirect to a different path and it doesn't render anything because we haven't created a template for the update action. So let's create one. All that it needs to do is render the profile partial again. So if we save the form now, we'll see that it advances to the next field and the progress updates as well. So I've filled everything in, but now the last response is just nothing again. And that's because if we have everything filled in, the profile complete predicate method returns true and we're rendering nothing. That's exactly what we wanted. But to make this last save look better, we need something to display there. Remember that the last save is called from within a turbo frame which has the ID of the current user. So in order to see anything in that frame as the last save response, we need to respond with the same frame. So we're going to put the last response in a different template and we'll render that if the profile complete method returns true. And inside that template, we're going to have an alert to signify success. And we're going to list all the user's profile information. So to test this, I'm going to go back to the console and set some of the attributes to nil. Awesome, it works. Lastly, I want to add some animation to this profile update form and to the alert that displays at the end. So to do that, we're going to add another Tailwind plugin that integrates animate.css with Tailwind. I'm going to use yarn to add the dependencies and I'm also going to add the plugin to the Tailwind config file. Now we can try it out. I'm going to clear some of the profile fields again and I'm going to add some animation classes to the profile form and the alert message. And if we try to form again, we'll see that it's using those animations nicely. I hope this video gave you some ideas on how you can integrate Hotwire in your own projects. That's all for now. See you later. Bye.